friends, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here for another live broadcast here on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, the episode is Trust Your Ear, ear training basics to help you to learn or basically to help you play by ear on the guitar. So this is a learning process. You guys will, uh, will have to uh, pardon me today. I've got, I don't know, allergies or something going on here today. It's not a cold. I've been juicing like a freak. Chris is sneezing in there. My baby's sneezing. and So I think it's allergies here in Nashville. Okay, so we're going to be talking about all sorts of really cool ear training bits and pieces today. We're going to be uh, announcing 15 winners of really cool stuff. And uh, we've got a coupon code for you for 75% off of my complete guitar system. This is uh, probably the most affordable way to get in a step-by-step uh, -step program that I have. It's not the unstoppable guitar system. It's not that big, huge bit, but it's the complete guitar system. It's on uh, a platform called Udemy, uh, the number one guitar system on Udemy. Thank you for the 90,000 folks that are in that program already. Uh, so we've got that for you as well today, okay? So, uh, and then we're also gonna do Q&A. So we're gonna be sticking around here for a bit today, and I'm gonna be popping back and forth between uh, Facebook and YouTube, okay? All right, here we go. So, and um, if I'm looking at my notes correctly here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, bits that I'm going to be showing you today. So, ear training, or you know, understanding how to hear music, basically, is something that's developed, and a lot of people don't understand that, or they may understand it. They may, you know, if you ask them, do you believe that, and they might say, well, of course it is. It's a, it's a learned thing. Some folks will say that, but they don't act like that. And what I mean by that is, oh, they get frustrated that they can't hear stuff, and but they're not practicing that. They're not applying certain principles that are going to get them there, okay? Similarly, even though they'll have a book on how to read music, if you stuck a piece of sheet music in front of me, I wouldn't be super good at reading that sheet music. I would know how to read the, 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 the music, which is what that book's about. I would know how to do that, but since I don't do it all the time and I'm mainly an ear player and I use music theory, I'm much better at that. So whatever you use is what you get good at, right? So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about these principles and I'm gonna be giving you some real world stuff so that you can apply this and you can become better at improvisation, which is what I was doing just now. I didn't have any plans on playing those specific notes, but I did anyway. Uh, and so that has to do with some music theory, but it also has to do with the ear. Okay, and we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna talk about how to find the tonal center and a bunch of other really cool bits. All right, so without further ado, let's get in for, um, those folks that have just joined us and you're and you don't know how the giveaways work basically if you share this video i mean i love the likes and i love the comments there's my buddy trent fancher like him he's a good guy and a fantastic drummer and a very debonair uh, picture of trent as you'll see there um so here's the deal if you uh share this video today so of course i like the likes and i like the comments and that's fun but if you share the video that lets more people know about what we're doing here helping folks learn how to play guitar for free and yeah do that share that and here's how it's going to work 10 winners are going to win today uh my ebook bundle which is worth 27 dollars. it's basically three books that uh that you can find available on yourguitarsage.com that's valued at 27 bucks a piece we're going to 10 winners are going to win that and then we have five winners that i'm going to send a cd out to of this is just my my personal plan and uh, it's not just personal playing. It's a little EP that I've done. And then this here is uh, one lucky winner is going to win, a, and only one winner of this because this is a very limited pressing of uh, the Nashville number system, which has everything to do with what we're talking about today. And it's basically a concept of understanding music with numbers uh, instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, sharps and flats and everything else. We just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing today. So, now, here we go. We're going to get into this starting from the beginning. So first off, <clears throat> the tonal center is the king, okay? Let's talk about tonal center and key. When someone has a speech or a movie or a song or a book or anything, 
that uh, is presenting a, some sort of subject, it's going to have a title, it's going to have a central meaning, a central point, and everything else in that piece of work is going to support that central theme. Okay, so we have a speech, we have a thesis, we say it at the beginning. Today I'm going to talk to you about why guitar is so friggin' cool. And then I'm going to tell you all for that during speech, all during that speech, why the guitar is so friggin' cool. And at the end I'm going to say, and that's why the guitar is so friggin' cool. Okay, that's to bookend everything. That's essentially in music, that's what we call the tonal center. Okay, if it were the universe, it'd be the sun in the center of the universe, or in the center of our solar system with all the the other planets revolving around it, okay? If you just walk outside and you look outside, if you don't know anything about science, then you might say, well, everything's revolving around us, you know? And we wouldn't know unless we had this further back view, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. Okay, so the tonal center is the king. And 99.999% of all the music that you listen to is going to have a tonal center. Uh, the only ones that don't are atonal music and 12-tone music, which give that a listen to on YouTube, and you'll realize why it's not sweeping the nation. There's no tonal center, so it's as if it's a cacophony of notes with no... It's, it's, it sounds like drivel to some. Uh, I suppose some think that they understand it, and it makes beautiful music and all the rest. Uh, but nonetheless, it doesn't really keep your attention. Okay, so tonal center is king. We're going to be talking about how to find that tonal center. Um, the number system, okay, just like in this that DVD that I've created. That's also in um, the Unstoppable Guitar System. I also have videos on it on YouTube um, and in the Udemy course that we have the coupon for, the 75% off coupon today, which all that information is in the description of this video. If you ever have a question, look in the description of these videos. So instead of me thinking you know, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I'm thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Because if if today I'm gonna sing happy, if, you know, let's say you walk into Applebee's today and uh, someone's birthday and someone goes, hmm, happy birthday to you and everybody starts singing, right? And then you go down the road and you go to another restaurant and there's somebody else's birthday and they're like, hmm, happy birthday to you. And then you go down to another restaurant and Another birthday, and somebody goes, mm, happy birthday to you. It's all the same song, right? But guess what? In all those three different scenarios, we got different sharps and flats happening, right? Ah, oh, confusing. I can't sing it because I don't know the sharps and flats. Of course you can sing it because you have relative pitch. I'm not sure why I'm pointing to my head, my temple. You have relative pitch, okay? And so what that does is that, um, that helps you to understand the distances, the basic distances between notes, okay? And with that knowledge, with that understanding, that's how we learn to play by ear. We don't have to know, oh, that's a sharp, that's a flat. We don't really necessarily have to know that. That information's helpful. Uh, people with perfect pitch, I'm doing that in quotes because it doesn't matter why I'm doing it. There's something called perfect pitch where people can hear a pitch and they'll tell you, okay, that's a, a sharp and it's slightly flat or whatever, they can actually tell you what that pitch is. Um, it's a pretty cool little skill, but relative pitch is in so much more important than that, and that is definitely a tool that you can grab and that you can understand with this, these bits that I'm, that I'm showing you today. Um, it's something that you can use right now and literally become a better player. Perfect pitch is also helpful. Uh, some say that you can develop develop it. Some say that you can, um, that it's not developed, that you cannot develop it. But nonetheless, uh, that's different. We're not talking about that today. Okay, so the number system. Um, <clears throat> if you want to know more about the number system, obviously in all my courses and on YouTube, type in Nashville number system. You're a guitar sage, okay? But the idea is we're using the major scale, you know, and we're assigning a number to each one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back to home. One. One. Those are all ones, and it sounds like it's coming back home. That's the tonal center. You hear this a lot in songs when a song starts off with like a G chord. Doesn't matter the chord. And it'll sit there and basically set the song up for you. And then we get into the song. But there's always this 
framework that's set up that gets your ear attenuated. Okay, here's the song, maybe there's a little guitar bit in the beginning, a little solo or something like that. And all that is preparing you for the story that's gonna be told in the verse, okay? Um, we do this with movies, we have that opening scene, do this with a speech, we say, hey, this is what we're talking about today. I do this with my broadcast, hey, we're talking about ear training today, so you're not like, what the flip is this guy talking about, okay? And because of that, we're establishing what it is that we're, that we're doing. And in the beginning of a song, you will oftentimes hear this chord bit going on. Which leads me to my next point. The first chord, okay, when we're talking about finding a tonal center, the first chord of the song is oftentimes your tonal center. It's almost always a dead giveaway. Not always. But most of the time, that's why I say when you're trying to find a tonal center, you need to think about being a detective because you're looking for clues. And as you get better at this, you'll be able to pinpoint that, that tonal center much quicker than you will in the beginning. But at first, you're looking for every clue possible. And here are some of those clues. The first chord of the song and the last chord of the song. Almost always the last chord of the song is going to dictate what the tonal center is as well. Because if you have a song that's in the key of G and it has a bunch of G and a bunch of C and a bunch of D and a bunch of E minor and it goes to the end of the song. I don't play that tonal center, you'll be like, dear God, man, play the tonal center. Because it brings it back home. Okay, now your ear knows this because I know just now that that felt uncomfortable. Because it really wants to resolve really badly to the one. And if we don't do that, then it's uncomfortable. We, we could end it on that. Good night, everybody. You know, doesn't feel like much of an ending. So, we have a tonal center. And that last chord of the song usually dictates that. The first chord of the song usually dictates it. The notes and the chords within the song dictate it. You can think of that as the DNA, okay? It's DNA of what the song is. So, for instance, and I cover this in a lot of my, I cover this in all my courses, um, some of my videos on YouTube as well. Let's say we have a song that has a G, and it has a C, and it has a D, okay? And it has an E minor. Well, the key of C major has a C. It has a G. It has an E minor. But the D is a D minor when we're talking about the natural construction of notes and chords and the way they all come together. Some of this is going over your head right now. You don't have to understand this. Just believe me when I say that in the key of D, normally the D, or in the key of C, normally the D chord is minor. So with that being said, there's this thumbprint or DNA, if you will, of each key. And that's determined by the notes and the chords that are being played. So. We can say, well, here we are being the detective. We're like, well, okay, the C chord looks like we're in the key of C, and the G chord looks like we're in the key of C, and the E minor chord, hey, more clues, we're in the key of C, right? But then we come across that D major, and in fact, that D major is not in the key of C major. So because of that, um, because of that, what, what happens is we have some we have some clue that's leading us someplace else so that d minor let's or let's say it's a d minor okay if it's a d minor now it could be in the key of c but with the chords that we were given g a c an e minor and a d major because of that we are indicated or those are the clues that are indicated that we're in the key of G, okay? Now, that's all we're gonna talk about that specific subject because I teach this, like, like I say, I teach it in, the, in um, the Unstoppable Guitar System, I teach it in the Complete Guitar System, the one that we have 75% off today. It's a coupon, it's limited to the first 100 people. Uh, so, if you're interested more in that, check that out. Um, I have a whole series, a 12-part series called Finding the Tonal Center, and it's all about what we're talking about today, but on steroids. Not that steroids are good for you, but you get the get the point I'm saying. Don't take steroids, kids. Okay, so <clears throat> here we go. So 
Let's look at, um, okay, so we talked about the number system. Let's talk about a few things that anybody can do today. So if that stuff just now went over your head and you're like, dude, I just picked up the guitar this weekend because I won it in your broadcast recently, then you can say, okay, I'll say, okay, I'm going to show you something more simple. So whether this is uh, just for beginners uh, well, I should say, this could be for beginners, this, this is for advanced players, it's for everybody. Uh, we're not using much theory here. What we're just doing is we're using notes and we're finding notes using what I call the hum and hunt method. I cover this in all my courses. The hum and hunt method is this idea of you, you hum a note. <laughs> And what I did is I just hummed the note and then I went chromatically, that's one fret at a time, without skipping any notes, I went in the direction of the note that I'm searching for. So for instance, I said, hmm, and I hit this note to start off, right, which is a G, doesn't matter really, we don't have to know what it is, but, and it's best to do this on one or two strings if you're not familiar with the fretboard as much because this way you can go down in half steps or go up in half steps. That means one fret distance. And because of that, you won't, it's impossible for you to miss the note if you're humming it and you're going towards it. So if I hear, mm, that's my note and I'm up here, mm, that's higher. Mm -hmm. I always raise my eyebrows when I sing higher or I, come, I put my head down. So you can use little, little cues like that that will tell you, hey, that's the direction of the note. So in this case, that's our note. And I, the first note I played was this. That's the direction, so I know I want to go down, so I'm going to go down in pitch. Get it? So this is called the hum and hunt method, okay? And I have a video um, for you on YouTube regarding this, I'm pretty sure uh, you can always search your guitar sage ear and that will help you uh, to under to, to, to find that video. Uh, but again, definitely in all the courses. Okay, so what's useful about this? Well, let's say we're singing happy birthday to you. Okay, well we gotta find our first note because you can almost think of that as a toggle note. It's a note that once you find that note, all the other notes are so much easier to find. Okay, if you're a detective and you're trying to find out who committed a crime, it's pretty a, a good idea if you find the address of where the crime is before just scouring the city looking for clues. Let's find out where the address is. Then we, we're at the address. Now, we, oh, there's clues all over the place. There's this, that, and the other thing, right? Same thing here. First note is our address. And then from there, we can find all these other notes. So, happy birthday to you. So if we'd like, hmm, what's that first note? Hmm, happy, okay, easy. Now we got that note. So, happy birth, happy, hmm, happy birth. So we found our second note. Go to the third note. Happy birthday. Cool, back to the C. Happy birthday to, sounds like a new note, right? Happy birthday to, it's even higher. Happy birthday to, nope. Happy birthday to, okay, now we're in business. Happy birthday to you. Okay, I'm honey, I'm humming and I'm hunting for the note. Now, just like if any of you meditate, brief scenario here, uh, meditation, when you meditate, it's not about keeping your mind still, it's about seeing where your mind wanders and then bringing it back. That's the practice, is the actual bringing the mind back. And the same thing here, it's, the, it's not a matter of you just being able to pick out the melody right away. Who can do that? I can't do that. I've been playing for almost 40 years, I can't do that. I have to find it piece by piece. Now there's some guitarists that have gotten so good at this that yeah, they probably could find it immediately. And that's because you practice, okay? So it's about the practice. So when you mess up and you hit the wrong note, don't get frustrated, 
that's the practice. Now you have to say, okay, I'm on the wrong note. What is the right note? And the fact that you're looking for the right note is the practice. That is what you're supposed to be doing. Um, if you end up just landing on the note, well then good, pat yourself on the back. You didn't really do the practice. You just are getting better at what you're doing. Okay, so that's uh, the fruition of your practice. Okay, so if I'm picking the guitar and I mess up, oh, I messed up. You find out what you did wrong, that's the practice. You picking well is the fruition of the practice, okay? So uh, don't mistake the two. And by God, 99% of the people mistake the two, okay? It's not about, uh, you know, if you're on a journey to learn about yourself and you're going to the rainforest or something like that, yeah, you're going to end up someplace, right? But it's the journey that's what's working on you, okay? So understand that. And if you think about that constantly when you're playing guitar, you're not going to be nearly as frustrated because it's the journey, okay? So remember that. It's the journey. Hum and hunt, okay? That's what you want to do when you're looking for these. Another great thing that you can do with, with another guitar player is to play a chord and to guess what the flavor of that chord is. And what I mean by that is, is it major, minor, seventh chord, ninth chord, that sort of thing. What I suggest you to do in the beginning is only use major and minor chords because, again, what we want to do is we're peeling back an onion and let's say there's 50 chord families. I don't know how many off the top of my head. That's probably about accurate. Um, but what you, what you don't want to do is introduce 50 chord families and, and think that you're just going to get it all of a sudden. It won't work like that. No amount of ego will get you there either. So what you want to do is you want to start off with major and minor chords. So if I say, what chord is this? Would you say it's major or minor? Here's a good question to ask yourself. Is it happy or sad? You still may not hear that, and that's okay. But that's the sort of thing you're going to work on. So let's compare the two, major and minor. Here's major. Here's minor. I shouldn't have told you that, but nonetheless, does one sound sad and one sound happy? Right, that one sounds happier, that one sounds sadder. So you may want to use that label instead of major and minor and just know that the happier one is going to be major and the sadder one's going to sound minor. Okay, so that's a great little technique that you can use with a buddy. Um, play a chord, turn your guitar away so they can't see it and say, is that a major or minor chord? You can do this over and over again, go back and forth, and it's a great way to, to start getting you to listen. In the same way that people do this with wines and what have you, they, they smell it and they... They look around, they, they smell, right? And they're going, mm, I taste subtle hints of cherry and mm, tobacco and blueberry. And, and I'm like, I, I taste gasoline because that's how alcohol tastes to me. Um, but nonetheless, I've done this and I've tried this and I've gone on bourbon tours and wine tours and what have you. And if I have someone go, do you sense a bit of spice in there, a bit of uh, whatever, uh, if they said gasoline, I'd say gasoline every time. I can hear that. But um, I, can, I can taste that. But if they said, can you taste the blueberries, and they kind of prompt me, then chances are I'm, gonna, I'm going to sense it more than if I didn't. So in the same way, when you're working with your friend, say, well, does that sound major or does that sound minor? You want to kind of basically you're opening up the ears, but you're saying, hey, it's kind of in this general area. When I'm working with my, my, my son and we're doing like match game, there could be, you know, 30 cards on a table. And I'll say, it's kind of in this area. Reminds me of, of Chris Farley and um, Tommy Boy. And he's like, it's not so much here or here where I've been hit by the two boy four. It feels like it's right here. And he had this massive mark right here. It's more, not here or here. It's like right here. <laughs> All right. So, um, so that's um, you know major and minor. Searching for major and minor. Okay. We talked about the tips for finding the tonal center, and then ultimately what all this is going to do, and we're going to get questions here in just a minute. Um, ultimately, what this is going to do is this is going to help you with improvisation. Okay. So, here I got this chord progression going. I know it's in E minor. I know that because. It's a song. It's my song, right? Except for that one chord um, should techni technically be minor, but it's major. And I'm thinking about that as I'm playing, so I'm using a little bit of music theory, but I'm also using my ear. And uh, technically, I don't have to use music theory if my ear is strong enough, okay? So 
With that being said, I know it's an E minor, so there's certain chords or certain melodies that are going to work with that well, just like when you match an outfit, you know, um, in the same way. Music matches like that. And so the more that you know about it and the more you use your ear, the better you're going to, to be at improvisation and being able to play melodies over certain things. So if I'm hearing, uh, if I'm hearing a, that melody go down, if I'm hearing it go, let's wait till it comes back around again. So this is an A minor. And anything, I, and this is a B, it's gonna sound nice. Now I'm gonna hear, I'm gonna listen to these chords walk down, and because of that, Now what I'm doing is I'm hearing it walk down and I'm walking down with it, right? So similarly, you know, if someone's talking, this is a, a great thing to do psychologically when people are talking. If someone crosses their legs, you cross their legs. If they lean forward and look like this, you lean forward and look like that. Why is it that we're attracted to that sort of thing? Because if someone's mimicking us and it's, they're not making fun of us, they're mimicking what we're doing. There's some psychology that happens there. Same thing with music. It's like we're, we're looking, we're constantly looking for symmetry in the universe. And this is one way to do it, is to listen, right? The more you listen, the better you're going to be as a musician, okay? Good stuff. Let's um, let's get into some questions, all right? Uh, for those that have just, uh, Lincoln Johnson just got in. Nice, Lincoln Johnson. Uh, what did he get? What kind of discount did he get? If you look in the description of this video, um, we're going to do some questions here in just a minute, but I want to tell you about the giveaways and all that good stuff. Um, so today we're doing 75% off, off, off of uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. 75% off of the complete guitar system, okay? This is not the Unstoppable Guitar System, but it has many of the videos that are in the Unstoppable Guitar System. It's a little bit different in that it's more affordable, but it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. I don't do live broadcasts in it, but we have lots of videos, and it's much more affordable than the Unstoppable Guitar System. So it just kind of depends. We have different products for different people because people want different things, right? Um, you can see right there, yourguitarstage.com slash play by ear. That's where you can get that discount, and there, there'll be all the information that you need there. Uh, there's a discount code that you'll put in, and you'll get 75% off of this, and it's for the first 100 people. So if you're looking to to, to get in, my friends, we're making it easy and cheap for you, okay, affordable. All right, um, oh yeah, giveaways. We're doing 15 giveaways today. 10 folks are going to win my $27 ebook bundle that you can find at yourguitarsage.com. There's a little tab there that says ebooks. If you click on that, you'll find all about the bundle. It's basically a $27 value. We're gonna be giving that out to 10 folks today. I'm also gonna be giving away five of my uh, EP, The Return that has Maniac, um, a couple of originals. It also has a version of Amazing Grace that I've done in here with, with Ebos. It basically sounds like bagpipes, and um, it's I think it's pretty cool. I wouldn't have put it on this if I didn't think it was cool. But I'm gonna be giving this away to five folks today, and one of those lucky winners is going to win my DVD, Nashville Number System. I did this for True Fire Guitar. Um, and my gosh, this is going to change the way you think about guitar and about music in general, okay? So that's going out to one person today. So we have 15 winners today, pretty cool. Um, all right, let's get into some questions. I love your guys' questions, and here we go. So starting on Facebook, her, we go. Um, someone watched the Pipeline lesson. Adrian, what's going on? Terrence, hello, sir. Steven, uh, Glenn took advantage of our of our offer for veterans on the unstoppable guitar system. Um, yeah, you can use YouTube on this, Jeff, YouTube or Facebook today, does not matter. Thank you for sharing, my friends. Yeah, uh, by the way, I, I mentioned all those giveaways. Those are for folks that share the video. So if you share it after the broadcast, uh, we pick winners and we, we will let you know. We will get in touch with you, all right? Uh, what's going on, Jeff, Ron, Johnny, Glenn, Paul? This is all on Facebook, by the way, friends. 
Um, Kelly, okay, looking for a question. Uh, Jeff, no, it, you do not have to use PayPal only. You can use a credit card. You don't have to use PayPal. So um, need to look a little bit further into that page that you're on because it's not. It's definitely not PayPal only. Uh, I may say PayPal on there, but you, it also says Visa and others, and you can use your credit card for sure, okay? All right. Uh, okay, so Jim is asking, and this is a great question. If you're already in the Unstoppable Guitar System, the Lifetime Membership, do you need the other package, the Udemy package here, the Complete Guitar System? No. You don't need it. Save your money. Go buy some strings. Go buy some accessories for your guitar. If you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System, you don't need the Complete Guitar System. Okay? It's set up differently, but the content, you're not going to get more content in the Complete Guitar System. It's more in the unstoppable guitar system okay it's more of a budget course but it's i mean there's a reason it's the number one course on udemy it's because it's chock full of great stuff uh in fact i think we're one of i think we're one of the um i think we're getting ready to max out how many videos we've put in that course and we're one of the only people have done that it's a massive course so you're getting an insane amount of value in it an insane amount uh, bigger than I think any guitar course that's out there on Udemy, and you can you can go there and check it out. Let me know. I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, how did you get over the nervous feeling of being able to play in a band? Luke is saying, Luke, um, I still get nervous playing live sometimes, but honestly, it's like the more you do it, the the less nervous you're gonna feel. Uh, it's just like practice. Someone will say, well, how did you get beyond being in the beginner section where you're sucking? Well, you, you go through it is what you do. You go through it and then eventually you get to the intermediate section, then the advanced section, you keep going. So really it's just moving through it. And uh, But there are some little tips that I'll give you for doing it. Um, if you're of drinking age, I prefer to have one beer before going on stage or a shot or something. Um, not condoning alcohol, I'm just saying for me it works just enough to take the edge off and then I step on stage and I'm good. And then by the time I'm playing, I'm fine. I'm, I, don't, I don't need anything. Um, okay, so, so that's number one. Number two is I tell myself constantly that if I break a string, if I play the wrong note, I mean, I play I play wrong notes all the time, play wrong chords all the time. Um, it's not the end of the world. Since I'm not working on someone's brain, it's okay. So I may hit a wrong note, and that's okay. Um, I've seen I've seen Stevie Ray Vaughan hit a wrong note. I've seen my my most favorite guitar players hit a wrong note, but they there's an uncanny way that they can wiggle out of that to where you go, well, hold on, did they hit a wrong note or did I hear that wrong? And uh, a great player will learn how to do this by just playing, by just keep going, keep going, okay? And you get better and better at this. So understand that when you step on stage, you're not going to break anything. Worst case scenario is you're going to mess something up, mess a song up, have to start over. Big deal. No one cares. They really don't. They want you to succeed. They want you to, to do well. So just think, I'm having fun up here. Focus on the other band members. Uh, pick a few people out of the audience. Look them in the eye. Smile. Get to feeling fun because it's really not uh, it's not a scary thing, you know. I know we, we for some reason we put this on ourselves that it's scary, and I'm not sure why that is, but I've been in the same boat, and I still am every now and then. I have to talk myself off a ledge. Not really off a ledge. I just say, it's not not that big of a deal, you know. Uh, live broadcasts. I mean, we'll have. I mean, today, let's see. We got 48 people on on Facebook right now, and on YouTube, we got. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how many folks we got. Well, if I could get to it. Um, well, I can't tell. 135. 135. Thanks. Uh, thanks, buddy. Um, so you know, that's 200 people on here right now. That's pretty cool. And. Uh, and I used to get nervous when I would do live broadcasts. Yeah, I did. I'd get nervous at live broadcasts, even though there's nobody sitting in front of me except for people in cyberspace. You guys, right? You're important to me, but it's important to, to if I mess up, which I do, you know, I'm not, I'm not the smoothest cat in the world, but you just do it. So just get out there and do it. Mess up. You know, I say that too. Get out there and mess up so that you can recover, so that you can do it again. Okay. All right. Good, good. Great question. All right, uh, question from Evan. How can I get better at jamming or improvisation with another guitar player? 
practice, Evan, with other guitar players on YouTube, search jam tracks. Search your guitar stage jam tracks because I have jam tracks on there. I've got a ton of them inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. But the only way to do it, to get better at it, is to do it. So get together with other musicians. Uh, have them play a chord progression while you play something over the top of it, whether it's chords or noodling or soloing or whatever. You do the same thing. And then after you're done, switch roles. Okay, So it's this constant uh, switching roles where you're like, okay, I'm playing a, a you know, E minor chord and a D chord and a C chord. you know, And then this way, you're... Your, that communication is going to help that other person play over the, over you, and then you guys just keep switching roles, okay? Great question. Is there a major scale I should really focus on? Uh, Chris, the major scale. Understand it from whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Know it from that point. For those folks that never will buy a guitar course and they just want to just kind of just graze the surface but have a really good solid foundation, go to yourguitarsage.com slash 30. And Christopher, uh, and by the way, where that link's in the description of the video, Christopher watched that video on understanding the major scale uh, because we're not just learning rote, okay, we're learning the scale, we're learning to understand how it's constructed. And when you know that, then you could bring it to any key so you don't have a specific key. You're, you're key agnostic. You can play in any key. It doesn't matter. So the major scale to learn is learn it the way that I teach it in the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Do I give seminars on the road, sir? Glenn is asking. No, I don't, but we're, we're talking about doing that. We're talking about traveling and, and doing, uh, doing seminars like that. I'd love, to, I'd love to do that. I think that would be a lot, a lot of fun. I'd like to hear more major minor uh, chord comparisons. Okay, Denise, I probably won't go over that today, but uh, well, I'll go over a few of them, but that's something you can do by yourself. Um, you know, say, play a chord and then say it afterwards. Record yourself on your phone or wherever. Be like, A major, you know? And doing that will help your ear because you can, you'll give yourself a second to listen and say like, okay, well, that's major. You know, and then you go to another chord. Okay, that's major. And you say that into the tape after you play the chord, and that's a way that you can practice by yourself. You don't need somebody else. But when you practice major or minor and major next to each other, you can really hear the comparison. It's, it's, a, it's a very obvious thing. Do you have any videos or courses uh, that teach you about amps, pedals, and effects? Christopher, yes. The complete guitar system, the one that we're doing today for 75% off. I have a whole section in there all about amps, pedals, effects, picks, cables, uh, tube amps, solid state amps, uh, just the whole nine yards, okay? That's in the complete guitar system. It's also in the unstoppable guitar system. But today we're doing that big special uh, play by ear, yourguitarsage.com slash play by ear for 75% off, okay? So yes, we do do that. And I've got the pedal cam set up today, so if you guys have any questions about effects or what have you, jump in there, let me know. Uh, we're not just talking about ear training today. We're going to be talking about all sorts of stuff, okay? Okay, um, can, you, can you talk about call and return, uh, call and response jams with another guitar player? How to improvise and sound good, Evan saying. Okay, uh, call and response is this idea of Basically, if I play, let's see, let's see, we're like, in, we're doing a blues bit, you know, and we're like, um, let's do this. Let's go, uh, is when, if I play a lick, and you go, and then you play, or, 
conversely, you could play a version of it. So if I go, if I go, and you play, you know, so the idea there is you're, it's as if someone's saying something and then you're saying something back, a call and a response, okay? So the idea is you can mimic someone exactly what they're doing or you can come up with your own thing. So more advanced players, when you when you watch them like in jam, uh, you know, jam um, sessions and stuff like that, whether on stage or in a room or whatever, uh, one guy will play a lick and then the next guy will play a lick to kind of complement that, you know? Um, or... In the beginning, you can literally try to copy them exactly, which I would suggest doing because um, you're really trying to get that ear attenuated. Later on, you can get more creative, but in the beginning, you're trying to get the ear attenuated. So, Evan, and everybody else, on YouTube, type in your Guitar Sage call and response. Okay, it's called call and response. Um, I have many videos for this inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. I'm not sure right off the top of my head if we have them inside the complete guitar system, but nonetheless, we are going to be putting um, some new videos in there, so um, hopefully those will make the cut. Lots of new videos. Again, like I said, we're maxing out the course. We can't put any more in there. Udemy doesn't allow us to, so we're kind of like this anomaly of getting an insane amount of value in these courses because we put so many videos in them. Um, so yeah, great question. All right, um, all right, still on Facebook and then I'm gonna pop over here in just a minute because I'm getting to the end of our questions here. Um, Evan, does your book have anything else that is not in the Udemy course? I'd love to read your book, but I already own the Udemy Complete Guitar System um, thanks, Eric. Evan, yeah, I mean, it's not, obviously, it's not the exact course, but if you're in the complete guitar system, uh, Guitar Mastery Simplified uh, sums up a lot of what I talk about in a book form, okay? So I'd say save your money. If you're in the complete guitar system already, no, you don't necessarily need the book. Um, it's helpful. Um, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan, so I will watch videos of his and then I'll listen to the audio and the podcast and everything else because to me, that saturation, that immersion and whatever it is that we're trying to do, just you eat, live, drink, and breathe it, then it makes you that, okay? But with that being said, um, there's probably not any concepts that are represented in here that are not represented in the complete guitar system, if that makes sense. Uh, Michel, uh, is it Michel? Michel is saying, Eric, it's very difficult for me singing and playing the guitar at the same time. Any tips? Um, yes, definitely in both programs, UGS and the complete guitar system, but I'll give you some tips right now and then also after this on YouTube, type in Your Guitar Sage Singing. Okay, your guitar sage singing because I have a video specifically that goes over what I'm about to tell you here, but in a lot more detail, and I'll probably miss something here right now. Okay, so when the deal about singing and playing at the same time, you say it's difficult. It is for everybody. It's not you. It's everybody. Uh, for the same reason that juggling five balls for everybody is difficult. Why? Because yeah, you hadn't done it before, number one. And number two, there's a lot of things going on. Your brain's like, what? Right? So... When you're playing, you're strumming. You got to be thinking about chords. Uh, if there's any other little like chord noodling or that sort of thing, you're gonna you got to think about that. You're thinking about lyrics. You're thinking about melody. You're thinking about what does my face look like while I'm singing? Am I gonna miss a lyric? There's a bazillion things hitting your brain at once, and our brains have to. It works. The brain works in a funny way in that we've got things in our subconscious and we've got things in our conscious mind. Things in our subconscious are things like when I'm talking to you like this, and I can sit here and play the guitar while I'm talking to you. The guitar is what's happening in my subconscious because I've done it so many millions of times, but my conscious mind is talking to you, conveying ideas to you, okay? But I've done this playing so much that I can kind of put that in my subconscious and it'll just kind of take over. Well, it can't go into your subconscious before it's very clear in your conscious mind. So what you want to do is watch those videos that I have. In fact, I have a whole I have a whole system of this in the Unstoppable Guitar System. Again, I'm not 
positive it's in the complete guitar system um, off the top of my head, but you can check it out, okay? Uh, and you can um, let me know whether it is or not. We'll give you your money back if it's not, okay? Uh, but there's a whole, I have a whole bit on it, okay, where I'm walking you through this, okay? And the idea is, is you know, you've got to break this down. You've got to make sure you got the, the all the guitar playing. We could separate it between guitar playing and singing. Make sure you have all the variables of guitar playing down. Make sure you know the chords perfectly, the order of the chords, the any noodling or anything that you're doing, any strumming and what have you. And make sure you have that down specifically. Because if you don't, adding singing is only going to make it a lot harder. So don't introduce it and think that it's going to happen magically. It won't. No matter how much ego we use, it won't work. So you got to learn this stuff separately. If playing guitar, if you still can't play the guitar without singing to a particular song, then you have to break those things down. Watch my, um, my video on YouTube, IBM, the Inventory Breakdown Method. It's where we're taking all these bits and pieces and putting them together, but we got to break them down got to do them individually. You first learned how to fret. You, then you learned how to str to pick. And then you learned how to strum. And then you learned how to play chords. Just like I teach step by step in all my programs, uh, the videos that I just mentioned to you just now in the, the free course, I'm teaching you how to fret one at a time, you know. And then as you get better at those, you start kind of Picking, putting all those pieces together. Now you got the guitar playing part down. Now you're working on the singing. Do you know the lyrics down? Do you have that down? Do you have the melody down? Uh, is it within your range? Like all the, just all that, those nine yards um, together, but separately first and then putting them together. Because if any of that is on either one of these scenarios are not really, really done well, then putting two together is like adding more Let's say you can't juggle three balls. That's adding more balls to the juggling scenario. Is it going to help you or hinder you? Thank you. It's going to hinder you, right? Okay, so don't do that. And watch that video on YouTube. Just type in Your Guitar Sage Singing. I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, Ron's saying the singing video is very helpful. Great, thank you. Uh, how do I train my ear to hear chords from a song uh, playing on the radio? Uh, you you watch my videos on that. You 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 watch the tonal center video that's in the free course, Chris. Or not in the free course. That's in the one that we're doing the discount today. Watch that because there's lots of bits. Sometimes you guys will uh, ask me like a question like that. How do you train your ear? You watch the course and then you do what I tell you in that course because um, I could give you just a. Uh, a, a real quick answer that really isn't going to help you. I mean, if we spend an hour doing it, it's not going to be enough to get you to hear chords from the radio and start playing them. You have to walk through the steps and do the homework. All right, excellent. Uh, hey, Eric, I like the blues. Uh, what pedal would you would be best for blues sound to start off with? Um, the Maxon or Ibanez Tube Screamer. That's going to be one of your, your best ones. Uh, Stevie Ray used it. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. And a bazillion other players used it too. Okay, last one here before I bump over to YouTube. Are you familiar with the Amp Fender Acoustic 100 for acoustic guitar? If so, any review, sir? No, I am not familiar with that one. Um, okay. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm bouncing over to YouTube here, and I'm looking for your questions. So, Hit me up on YouTube. I see a lot of questions here. Nice. Okay. Here we go. What's the best way to get back to a resolve? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I think uh, what you mean by that is a cadence because I think I've heard um, some folks in different countries call it a resolve. Um, so a cadence is, um, you know, basically where we come back to the one chord. And the five chord oftentimes leads back to the one chord. The four chord will oftentimes lead back to the one chord. Um, seven chord leads back to the one chord very nicely. But really, any chord can, can go back to, to the one chord. That's how you resolve. Uh, Sam, if you, if you share on Google, does, uh, does that give me a chance at winning? I think we look on Facebook and Twitter. Those are the, the main ones that we look on. So I'd say share it there if you can. All right. Oh my goodness, tons of questions. Um, 
Dude, you're totally saging. You're totally saging today. It's the journey. You're the best. Thanks. Thanks, my friend. I know sometimes I, I go down a rabbit hole, but it, it to me, it's like I those concepts, I build on those concepts and understanding the whys about things and relating it to other things that we know, like the journey or meditation or whatever is um, oftentimes how we get there, you know? I don't drink gasoline often, but I know how it smells. That's why, to me, wine smells like that. Uh, do you check out channels that subscribe to you to see w where people need to concentrate on learning? Um, I do check out other channels, and um, but uh, I think to date we're like at 367,000 subscribers, so that would be exhaustive to go through all of that. Um, so what we do is we'll post videos. Like for instance, I just posted one. Why is it that? Uh, what is it that got you to play guitar? You know, we just posted this, I think, yesterday or the day before, and uh, I'm going to be reacting to those um, here in a few days. So that's, I find that's the best way because everything's central there, and I can, I can feed off of your guys' vibe, what it is that you're looking for. And these as well, these live broadcasts, it's like real time. It's like I can answer those questions for you in real time, you know? Um, okay... So isn't that called solfege, finding the notes? So solfege is, is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. It's a system of counting the major scale or counting notes with uh, Italian, I believe they're Italian um, words or, yeah, to, to find the notes. So that's uh, kind of an, an old opera bit and uh, it's very helpful, okay? Uh, so, are you saying you have to know some tricks or licks to improve over over a track? Can you expand on what licks to use? Okay, um, I'm saying yes. It's helpful to know tricks. It's helpful to know licks to make your improvisation sound better. Think about this for a minute. My kid's two years old, right? If I go in there and I hand him a dictionary and I'm like, get cracking, bro, because you really need to start talking. Is that going to happen? Nope. So we've got all these notes. Boom. Here, go. You got all the notes on the fretboard. Why aren't you why aren't you phrasing? Well, you're not phrasing because you've got all the notes. You've got a dictionary. You don't have phrases. So think about that for a minute. So like when I'm teaching my kid, um, are you hungry? And he's like, "Hungry?" And then I give him something to eat and he associates that with hunger with, well, yeah, I'm hungry. And the next time he's going to say, I'm hungry. So if you know that, um, that this is a bluesy lick, then chances are you're not going to use that in a reggae tune or a country tune, right? Although it may work for country. Um, but nonetheless, it's going to have a particular sound. And so you are going to use that more or something like that because you're going to know about it. Or if you hit this note here and you go, well, that's kind of boring. What happens if you add a trick like, so I did a slide down and a bend up, you know, those sorts of things is going to add more zest to what it is that you're, that you're doing, you know? All right. Great question. Um, Okay, hit me over the head with a two by four, and what tone will I hear? Imagine it's it's sad minor, E minor. Uh, what tonal center is running down a dream? Right, what tonal center do you guys think that is? You know, gotta turn that, gotta turn that off. Well, I'm hearing a lot of E, right? And so, it's an E. It has a lot of E, a lot of E going on there. Great question. So see, play that lick a bunch and see if that doesn't make sense to you, you know? Okay, great, 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 great. Um, 
do I'm having trouble identifying chords. Do you have ear training vids or lessons? Yeah, on YouTube, just type in your guitar sage ear. However, all the good stuff, all the the step by step. Uh, stuff is in the complete guitar system that we're doing 75% off today. It's also in the unstoppable guitar system where um, I have, you know, a lot more of the stuff that's in the complete guitar system, but we've got those step-by-step -step models in both of those chords and both of those courses. That's how you want to do it, my friend. All right, leave those, uh, make sure you put those question marks, friends, because I'm skipping over any that don't. It's just too hard. It's too hard to, to concentrate on uh, on that. Okay, I have small hands. I have a hard time playing my adult acoustic guitar. Any advice on how to overcome this issue? Mary, yes. On YouTube, whenever I tell you this, open up another tab. Go to YouTube and type this, okay? So you're on YouTube and you're typing your guitar sage hands. Okay, do that because I have a video about specifically addressing what you're talking about, Mary. Uh, small hands, big hands, uh, hands that have been bitten by 150 pound Rottweilers that have arthritis. Uh, Ed, I don't care what you got. I see guys playing with no arms, playing the guitar with their feet. So uh, it doesn't matter. It really, truly doesn't matter. I've seen way too many people. I've seen one of the fastest guitar players and most amazing guitar players, Django Reinhardt, um, was an amazing jazz player, very, very famous. And then he got in a bad accident, which rendered fingers three and four useless. So then he could only play with fingers one and two. Pull him up on YouTube, and those are the videos you're going to see where he's just using two fingers. The guy f plays faster than I'll ever think of playing. I'm not faster than I'll ever think of playing. If I practice like him, I'd, I'd play as fast as him. But the guy is sailing across the fretboard with two fingers. So with that being said, Mary, that's encouragement to you. I'm not, I'm not saying don't, you know, it's not an excuse. It is an excuse, but I'm telling you it doesn't matter. You can play however you wish to play if you have the focus and you do the practice. But watch that video, okay? It'll help a ton. Okay, great questions here. Great questions. Do I like loopers? What about the Helix voice? I don't know that one, and I love loopers. Obviously, I got a couple of them here. Uh, fantastic, you know. Uh, do you think this will help my harp accompaniment? Constantly scrambling to find the right key. 100%, Rob. It helps with any instrument. You've got to know what key you're in. You know, if you don't know what key you're in, you grab the wrong harp. Uh, that's a that's a, a harmonica for those that don't know the colloquialism there. Um, if you don't know what key you're in, it's gonna sound really bad, right? Yeah, totally. So of course, yeah, it will. All right. Now, how is it? How is it that uh, YouTube does this to me? Okay. Uh, Dude, your blues uh, sounds sick. Can you add some more video in your system expanding on how to improvise in blues? Uh, I have tons of videos uh, on blues inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, again, inside the Complete Guitar System, we're adding a bunch more videos. So if that's the one you're talking about, Google user, if you're talking about adding more blues stuff to that system, then we're planning on doing that. Um, a lot of this stuff is in the Unstoppable Guitar System. Some of it is in the complete guitar system, and I have lots of stuff on YouTube. So on YouTube, type in your guitar sage blues. All right, do I teach many jazz chords? I do inside of my courses, but I teach them from the swing guitar um, genre because I love swing guitar more than I do just like traditional jazz. But yeah, six chords, nine chords, thirteen chords, the whole, the whole enchilada. Uh, great. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm, I'm, there's some crazy questions there. What is tone deaf, and can it be overcome? So I have a video says that says, uh, you know, it's something about being tone deaf, and I, I've had a few people, you know correct me saying, yes, you indeed can be tone deaf, which again, I come right back and I say, if that were true, then someone would not be able to control 
the tone of their voice. That means when they're talking at the end of their sentence, they won't go up like that. Or if they ask a question, they won't say, uh, how are you doing today? Because if they did, if they weren't able to do that, or I should say if they were tone deaf, they would not be able to do that. So if they are truly tone deaf, and I don't mean deaf, because obviously deaf people, when they, when they speak, you can hear that they can't speak because of the modulation of their voice, because of the, the, the notes that they pick. Um, you can, and just the way they pronounce things, you can hear that they're, not, that they're not hearing, okay? So I don't hear that with people that are so-called tone deaf. And the reason I say there is no such thing as tone deaf there may be some clinical thing out there, but again, I've never come across it. I've never seen it. Um, and to say you have it is probably very defeating. So I'm saying you don't, you're don't. you not tone deaf. You just work on your ear and you become less and less tone deaf. So in that case, are, is there anybody really ever tone deaf? Um, okay, there may be one person out there since the beginning of time that was. I don't want to talk about that person because it's not you. Okay, You can work on your ear and you can get better at it. Um, how to get better at it? Watch my videos on ear training. John Mayer sound on cheap pedals, amps, etc. combos. Uh, well, you're not going to get John, John Mayer sound on cheap pedals, amps, and combos. Uh, but if you're going to, the best thing you could do is you could get a cheap Stratocaster. You know, not this is not cheap, but get a, get a cheap Stratocaster, like a $200 Strat, and plug it into and use a clean sound on cheap amp. And that's um, how to kind of get his sound. Uh, otherwise, you could use tube amps. That's another way to get closer to that sound. And um, and use a nicer, finer guitar if you want to get closer to that sound. All right. Good, good questions. Uh, what fun is an improv piece in all major tones in eighths, only no sixteenths or quarter note embellishments? Boring, indeed. Yes, boring. But uh, sometimes that can be helpful to, to teach. Sometimes you got to uh, make it simple, right? So for those folks that are in the beginning stages of learning. Uh, what made me decide to learn to play guitar? thing that made me decide to learn to play guitar was a song called Foolin' by a, a group named Def Leppard in the 80s, maybe 1983-ish, and I was hooked. It just, I was absolutely hooked. All righty, all right. I'm going to bounce back over to YouTube here, or to Facebook here in just a minute, because I just got to the very bottom of, well, I think I did, the very bottom of the YouTube videos, at least to the extent that I can see them. Uh, if you strap on the pulse Oh, I am. I'm actually at the at the beginning of it now. Okay, good, good, good. We'll leave it right there. Okay, if you strap on a pulse metronome to your neck, will it produce vibrato? No, it will not. No, it not enough to to do that. Nope. Plus, you want to learn how to do that yourself, and I have videos on that. Okay, can you deduce the key from the opening chord, Raymond? Great question. Oftentimes, I'd say 75% of the time, the opening chord is going to be the key that you're in. Not always. Uh, watch my videos on that. I talk about being a detective because there's lots of different clues that lead us to what the tonal center is. And if you're not using all those tonal, those all those clues, then you may be um, jumping the gun and saying what the tonal center is before its actual tonal center. Don't want to do that, right? Especially if you're just jumping into a solo. You want to make sure that you're in the right key. Okay, great questions. All right, really quickly, uh, before I bounce back over to Facebook, uh, we're doing 15 giveaways today. 10 lucky winners are going to win our, my $27 ebook bundle that you can find at yourguitarsage.com. Five winners are going to win my CD, and one of those winners is going to win a... Uh, one of those of the of the five winners of the CD is going to win my DVD on the Nashville number system. If you don't know what that is, look that up. Mind altering, mind changing, uh, mind blowing video on how to understand music in a different way that most people don't take the time to learn. It's not actually the easiest way to learn music, uh, but people don't take the time to to learn it. Okay, on your website, what videos should I look at specifically for lead phrasing? Uh, well, if it depends on what, which, 
website you're talking about. If you're talking about on YouTube, type in Your Guitar Sage Lead or Your Guitar Sage Blues, uh, I call and response, um, lots and lots of different uh, videos that I have for that. And inside, uh, I mean, and there's, I have so many videos on it, you'd have to get more specific what you're talking about. Okay, jazz chords. Yes, I teach them. Um, I teach them inside the systems. Uh, but to just jazz chords, that's like saying universe because <laughs> there's lots of jazz chords and we'd, I'd, we'd have to get more specific. So if you can do that, Sydney, I can, I can help with that. I've been playing for seven weeks and I'm finding that it's hard to switch between chords. Oh, I just got off on a tangent there. We're doing those 15 winners for folks that share the video. Okay, share it on, on Twitter, share it on Facebook, and we will pick 15 winners after this broadcast. Also, two other things. Um, today, 75% off, and this is we have we're gonna open this up for 100 people, so it could end today, it could end tomorrow. I don't know when. It's whenever those 100 coupons are used up. Um, so. It's 75% off the complete guitar system. I think it makes it under 40 bucks. It's like 38 bucks or something. Massive discount. The complete guitar system is basically the, the most affordable way to get into my structured lessons. Yes, I have like over a thousand videos on YouTube between all my channels. Yes, you can learn from that for free all day long. You can learn from yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Uh, the first 30 lessons I teach all my students. You can do that and that's great and I want you to. But if you're looking for something that, that's more on steroids, more like, hey, Eric, I'm serious about guitar. I really wanna get good at this. I'm, I'm, I'm done being a mediocre player. I wanna get up to the next level. Then start with the complete guitar system. Um, it's a mammoth course. It's the number one course on Udemy and 75% off today. Um, all the information for that is in the description of this video. So check that out. Is there anything else I want to tell you about? I don't think so. I think that's it. Um, I'm going to bounce back over to Facebook here in just a moment. We'll get to some more questions there. Okay. Do you think it's a compliment to do a version of your own or someone else's song, or should you try to do covers exact? Jeff, ask yourself why it is that you're not doing the cover exactly the way it it was done originally, okay? If you're improving on what Eric Clapton or Jimi Hendrix did, then by all means, improve on it. Do something cool. And, I'm, and I, it may sound like I was being sarcastic there, and the reason being is I was being sarcastic there. No, really, it could be either, okay? So... If you can improve on what they're doing, or I should say, maybe not even improving, but doing something that's tasteful in another direction, then by all means do that. But if, you know, I see a lot of people, they'll do a solo, um, a, a solo that should never have been changed, and they'll do it with some, with crappy licks and everything else. And you can tell they only did that because they didn't want to take the time to learn the solo and they were being lazy. And it's, brutally honest to everybody, or at least the guitar players in the audience, it's very obvious that that's what they did. Um, big deal, you know, it's not brain surgery, they're not killing anybody, but uh, from a, like a respect level, when you watch somebody do that, when I watch somebody do that, I'm like, oh, you just had an opportunity to, to shine, and you took the lame route. So my, my philosophy on that is, uh, if you're doing it because you're being lazy, then don't do that. Learn it the way the original guy did it. Or learn it the way the original guy did it and then add your own bit to it, okay? Um, so, for instance, you know, uh, uh, Sultan's a Swing, right? It has this lick in it that goes... Um, goes... has that lick in it. it took a bit to learn and uh and that's how i would play it and then i came up with kind of this thing where i was going uh but i but i'm using a pick where i'm going i am rusty rusty today Rusty rivets. But um, the point is, is that I took the notes that he was doing and I kind of did my own spin on it. But yet I learned both versions of it. And does that make sense? 
Okay. Um, alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Great questions here today, man. You guys are killing it. I love it. Yes, Foolin', really. That is the song that that, uh, that made me play guitar. Any tuning issues on Les Paul, Stratocaster better? Yeah. Uh, Gibsons are notorious for, for being wonky. Uh, they just are. I remember back in the day saying that and then, you know, saying this to other guitar players and the guitar players I was hanging around with, they would just kind of go, huh, well, I don't know. Well. And so I always thought it was just me, but then as, I, as the years have gone by and I've talked to more professional guitar players uh, and still have issues with with Gibsons, not that much. It's just a little bit different now. But back in the day, I could couldn't keep a dag on Gibson in tune, uh, and they're some of my favorite guitars. At least the electrics, um, the acoustics, not so much. But yeah, it's it's kind of a, a thing sometimes. But it can be overcome. Watch my videos on tuning on YouTube. Type in your guitar stage tuning. Um, I would show my cats on the camera, but they're not here. They're upstairs right now. Oh, does the blues countdown always start from the eighth? I'm not sure what you mean by that, by the eighth. Sorry. Um, oh, your actual website for the Unstoppable Guitar System for the lead phrasing videos. Okay, Lewis, uh, if you're inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, there's a search functionality, um, I think in the bottom left-hand corner. And there you could type in lead call and response, blues, um, yeah. If you type in those three things, you're gonna find a ton of videos step-by-step step in those different courses. All right, great. All right, I'm popping over to, here I go, I'm popping over to Facebook. I'm neglecting those kids. How old am I? I'm 48. What? Yeah, 48. Almost 50, 50. I don't think about age though, because to be quite honest with you, with the exception of the bags under my eyes from, I guess, having a toddler who doesn't sleep, um, I'm feeling younger actually than I did a few years ago. All right, Phil didn't know we were going live today. Live, we're doing live every 11 a.m. on, uh, we're, we're doing that all the time on Thursdays on Facebook and YouTube. So just uh, hit that little notification bit there, or I think there's some way to get notifications. I don't know. Well, you definitely subscribe, right? Um, but this will be recorded so you can watch it later on. Cool. Good, good, good. All right, play lots of rhythm guitar, but I wanted to get better at lead, and it just confuses me sometimes. Where should I start? Should I learn lots of scales? Nope, do not learn lots of scales, Ian. Watch my videos, whether you're in my courses or whether you're on YouTube. Watch my videos on blues, okay? Usually when I'm talking about blues, I'm talking about improvisation and learning how to play lead, okay? Glenn, I don't teach classical. I give it the respect that it deserves. Uh, I started playing classical growing up, and was in went to classical school for for three years before I changed my major and moved to Nashville. Uh, and it's a it's a whole different beast, and I appreciate it. But it should be taught with love, and it should be taught the way it 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 deserves respect. That's what I'm saying. How do I break myself of watching my hands? Number one, there's nothing wrong with watching your hands, Ron. But if you want to break it, uh, hit the lights, turn the lights off. And play and you'll be like well that's difficult I know it is that's gonna that's gonna force you to use feel only so don't look at the fretboard turn the lights off get in a pitch black room start playing guitar that's how to do it and that will work magic for being able to play guitar without looking at the fretboard all right great questions man you guys are killing it today love it all right, I'm back, bouncing back over to uh, YouTube because we seem to be getting more questions there, and that's cool. Whatever. Now, if I didn't answer your question because I feel like I've been through them all, post it again, put a question mark on it, um, even if you did it last time. I'm sorry I missed it, but if you didn't, that's probably why because I'm skipping over any that don't have a question mark. It's hard to see. I can't think of different scales together. Is there an easy way to get the scales on top of my fingers? Um, yes. On YouTube, type in Your Guitar Sage Scales. But um, there is a video that I posted pretty recently that says 
no one form know them all because you're saying like you can't link the different scales together and this uh, savant will truly help you to understand if you can understand where the tonal center is if we were in a there's an a there's an a there's an a here's an a here's an a here's an a here's an a i mean i can pull those right out of my butt you know those are a's all over the fretboard and if i know where that's at then it, let's say i wanted to play the blues scale then i've got it right there understanding will keep you from having to sit here and memorize all these forms even though that's very helpful to do but it'll help you to understand the fretboard in a really organic method okay um, so for that to understand that uh, open up another tab go to YouTube and type in your guitar sage no one form no k-n-o-w one o-n-e form uh, no one form know them all and that'll help you to uh, to understand that method and it'll help you to string them together as well uh, do you think one can go to the next level without knowing a lot of mu a lot of knowledge on music theory Adam's asking there are guitar players that are said to know no music theory to have never studied music theory well that's an impossibility so even your favorite guitar players that say they don't know any music theory, they know music theory. They just may not know the labels that we put on them. So for instance, if someone picks up a camera tomorrow and they just take these amazing pictures, but they supposedly know nothing about light or concept or depth and all this other stuff, it's like they do know it. They know it instinctively, okay? They may not know the labels and what have you, but they know it. Uh, the reason they're not pointing the camera into the sun or, or they, the sun's behind their subject, there's a reason they have the sun behind them and they're pointing at the subject, okay? So like same thing with guitar, it's like it's almost impossible to get better and not know music theory, okay? Don't, Adam, it sounds like you're scared of music theory. Don't be scared of music theory. It's easy. It's addition, okay? It's literally addition. And, um... It's super easy, so don't be scared of it. Uh, number one, on YouTube, you can type in your guitar stage theory, and I have a lesson out there specifically for folks that are scared of it, that are like, if this is the only thing you know, know these things, and it's like maybe like nine things, five things, and they're super easy. So if you know those things, it's like 90% or 80% of everything you're gonna need to know about music theory, theory or at least building on top of that. So, um, so number one, do I think you can get to the next level? Yeah, kind of, because you can do it without thinking that you're knowing music theory, but you're gonna be knowing music theory, okay? You're gonna be learning shapes, you're gonna be, your ear's getting better, it's all music theory, okay? Uh, Raymond's saying it sounds like mandolin from Italy. Yeah, it does, because that's, a, you know, mandolins, uh, he's talking specifically when I was doing this, right? Um, so, the, you know, because usually mandolins will play like, um, I'm sorry, I'm terribly rusty today, guys. I've been working in a studio nonstop and I haven't been playing much the last few days. Sad. Okay, palm muting usage in rhythm guitar, do sound a saying. Thank you, Billy, um, saying I'm a great teacher. Um, Dusan, palm muting usage in rhythm guitar. I have a whole, I have a video for that on YouTube. Type in your guitar sage muting and specifically right hand muting, I think I call it. So here's what we wanna do with palm muting is that you wanna take this fleshy part of your palm and you put that right here on the bridge. And depending on how muted you want it to sound is how much of that palm is on the strings. Too much and it's gonna to sound too percussive. Not enough and it's just gonna sound kind of muted. Do some really cool stuff with it to give to give that that nice sound. But watch that video, Dusan. That'll help a bunch. 
hey, how should I get the exact chord progressions in one scale? I tried many times, I failed to get the exact. Okay, so Mihail, um, download the free ebook that's at yourguitarsage.com, okay? Or better yet, go to the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Go there, and uh, I have a video where I'm talking about capos, and I have a PDF that's in that video that has basically all the, the keys that you're gonna use a lot and the chords that are associated to those keys. That's how you do it, that's how you know. Otherwise, here you go, you wanna know them real quick in a major key, any major key, it goes like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, and the chords represented for each one of those are major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven, and back to your major one again. That's true for every major key. I've ever played or heard of the acoustic guitars Zager, I have not. Any tips on Im improving bends and vibrato? Velas is saying, yes, watch my video on YouTube. Uh, your Guitar Sage bends. Watch that video. But uh, to give you a, a couple tips on this is, or at least we'll talk about bends first, is hit a note that you're, that's your target note. And then bend up to it. And you can get faster at it. See, and then, so by practicing that, you'll get better. But start slow, nice and slow. Uh, and as far as vibrato, you know, you want. I always think about it like you've got a cigarette butt and you're kind of putting it out inside of an ashtray. So you're kind of grinding the the fretboard a little bit, and you're you're kind of twisting at the wrist a little bit. It's always going to sound awkward at first. Bends and vibratos always sound awkward at first. They just do for every single player since the beginning of time, amen. And this is how you can tell new players is when they bend a note or do vibrato, it always sounds, you know, they're like. Sounds like a, sounds like a mosquito. <laughs> they're doing vibrato, it's like. It's like kind of out of pitch and stuff like that. It is for everybody, so it's okay. You just gotta practice it more, okay? And I've got, I think I have a video on vibrato as well on YouTube. Just and on, Whenever you have a question about anything like that on YouTube, just type in your guitar sage and whatever it is you're looking for. Your guitar sage Elvis, your guitar sage Nirvana, your guitar sage Benz, your guitar sage Radiohead, your guitar sage uh, Major Scale. You know, that's the way to do it if you want, if you're looking, if you like the way that I teach on a specific um, instrument, then that's how to do it. Um, you stopped answering my question to talk about your special. How long does it take to learn chord progression? Uh, I don't think I answered that one at all, Tony, because I don't know what that means. How long does it take to learn chord progression? Which chord progression? A specific song? Uh, it depends on your, depends how long you've been playing, depends on how long the chord progression is. Uh, but, you know, chord progressions take, you know, seconds to learn. Um, but I'm not sure what you mean specifically. I don't think that's what you mean is chord progression. I think you mean something else. Um, so if you can rephrase that, uh, hopefully I can answer that uh, for you accurately. Uh, what are your favorite strings to use and what gauge do you recommend? Uh, I don't have a recommendation for gauge because that has everything to do with personal preference. If you're starting off, I think nines are good to start off with um, just because it's a, you're not going to typically overbend them, but you can typically bend the strings. And that's for electrics now, nines. Right now I'm using tens and I fluctuated. I've never used eights except for maybe once to try it. They were too uh, slinky for me. Uh, I've used nines and then tens. I've used elevens, but tens seem to be what I prefer. On electric guitar, I like D'Addario and GHS Boomers. And on acoustic guitar, I love Vibe strings, V-I-B-E. In fact, we give those away at our live broadcasts, um, usually once a month. If you want to know more about that, yourguitarsage.com slash live. We give away thousands of dollars worth of stuff every single broadcast. Yeah, we do, and it's so much fun. 
Um, so, and as far as string gauge there on acoustic guitars, I prefer to have a thicker string because I don't like, um, I, I, I like to be intonated. I like it to sound good. And when you use thin strings on an acoustic for some, for whatever reason to me, they sound, they, and they, they're not intonated correctly. They just, they go out of tune, the whole nine yards. All right. Great questions. Tempered frets on a guitar, perfect intonation. What do you think? Mike's asking. Uh, Mike, what Mike's talking about here is he's talking about kind of like a technology that's basically where, you know, the guitar is imperfect. Just like many things are imperfect, right? The difference between one fret and the next is measured in cents, just like a dollar. And it's a hundred cents from one fret to the next. So you can think about a hundred different variables. And if we were to analyze each one of these frets, you're gonna find that it might be as far off as six cents, okay? Five cents, that's basically 5% or 6%, okay? May not sound like a lot, but it is. Our ears pick up on this. And so because of that, uh, there have been some folks out there who have developed uh, tempered fretted guitars, uh, ones that have perfect intonation technically, um, that's, that's given that you're not bending too much or, or the strings perfectly in tune and those sorts of things. But with that being said, I've heard this before and, uh, and one would think, oh, it's going to sound so much better. And it doesn't, it sounds, it sounds, um, it doesn't sound, oh God, how could it be? It's the difference between a painting that's very, very, very sharp and a painting that's very sharp. Like sometimes it being so sharp, so the edge is so sharp or what have you, that you're like, okay, I get it. It's very, very clear, you know? Um, there is a such thing, I think, is getting so clear that you're like, okay, we're kind of past the point of diminishing return now. It's just clear, you know? So uh, that's how I think on these tempered fret guitars. I think they're great. It's a great idea, but um, it's like, you know, the guitar's in tune. <laughs> and you're playing the right stuff. It's like those little imperfections are kind of nice, you know? Which one should I buy my next electric guitar? Uh, as my next electric guitar, Les Paul, Stratocaster, or Telecaster, please recommend. It really depends on what you want. I have a video on this, uh, Les Paul versus Stratocaster uh, to, to basically talk about the differences between the two. I love Strats and I'm, and I love Les Pauls so uh, and I love Tellys. So with all that being said, uh, they're all great for different reasons, you know. Uh, it depends on what style of music you're playing too. So if you're playing a lot of blues and stuff, I'd say go with a Strat. If you're playing punk and rock and stuff like that, then uh, Tellys are really cool, especially also for country. And if you're just playing straight up hard rock, then I think the um, I think the Les Paul is perfect for that. Yeah. How do I know if my action's too low? Uh, if it if it's buzzing a lot, if if it just doesn't sound right, if, if frets are zeroing out like they're not playing, those are all indications of your action being too low. Uh, Cheryl is pooping. She says, "I'm pooping." Okay, thank you, Cheryl, for sharing that with us. <clears throat> Appreciate that. All right, so um, your bends suck. Well, they suck only because you haven't practiced them enough. Everybody's bending sucks until you practice it enough, okay? Make sure that you're not using strings that are too, you know, that you can't bend up high enough. So if you have like 11s or 12s and you can't bend to a note, then practicing is just gonna really hurt your, your fingers. Uh, so make sure your strings are, you know, nines or tens. You should be good and then just practice, okay? Uh, Sanet is saying, how do I find the key of a song by listening. That's what this whole broadcast was about. So watch the beginning of this, but better yet, the coupon that we have that you can find in the description of this video, um, it basically, basically the, the URL is yourguitarsage.com slash play by ear, but you can just click on that. It's in the, the uh, description of this video. We have 75% off of the complete guitar system today. And that has a whole course, a whole, I believe it's 12 lessons 
on finding the tonal center. So if you really want to know how to do this and you're not just goofing off and just hitting a video here and there on YouTube, which is, I don't know for you, it never gets me there. I, I need a course. I need something that's step by step going to get me there. My time is my most important commodity. I don't know about you, but um, it's, it's a really important commodity. So I don't like to screw around. I like to get to someone who's teaching me the correct way, teaching me step by step, buy the course, do it, and move on to my next goal. Uh, so watch that. Otherwise, on YouTube, just type in Your Guitar Sage Ear, and you can kind of pick around and um, see if those videos help you. Uh, how come you haven't played Hey Joe today? I just did. And I do have a video on that. Yeah, type in Your Guitar Sage Hey Joe. Uh, I want three pedals to buy for blues and country. My budget is limited to 150 or so. Okay, Melvin, you ready? Let's go to the pedal cam. This pedal right here, uh, the Line 6 M5, this guy right here is less than $100. In fact, it's probably about $150, $120, bucks, something like that. That has all the effects that you're ever going to need. You can only play one effect at a time, that being said. Okay, you can only have one effect playing at a time. But this guy has all the effects that you're ever going to need. Get that one. That's my answer. What kind of pick are you using, meaning uh, heavy, medium, or light? So that, well, at this moment, I literally just picked up what, whatever was here. And this particular one is a Dunlop of 71 millimeters. Um, but earlier, I was using a um, Dragon's Heart, and then this one was a, a Chicken Picks. So honestly, uh, I just have so many laying around here. Honestly, I'm not thinking too much. I'm just grabbing right now. If I was in the studio or something, I might be more specific. But I like medium to heavy, unless I'm strumming. And if I'm strumming, then I use light pick, lighter picks. Um, okay, great. Great, great questions. What scale key should I use to find out the song? I don't know what that question means, my friend. Probably answered, though, in the course that I'm telling you about. because, uh, But that... Does not make sense. Verdi, where you wrote, he skipped me, would have been a great place to put your question. So you may want to put it again. Um, and use a question mark if, you're, if you haven't. Okay, thank you for your time. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so, so you, so, yes. Okay, them are Nashville shoes. Yes, they are. Okay, great. Bouncing back over to Facebook here. We're probably going to close up shop here shortly. I'm going to answer a few questions here on Facebook. And then, um, and then we'll head on out. Okay. Yeah, lots of questions here on, on, on Facebook now. Okay. We have the classical guitar. We talked about that. Nope, not doing that. Um, how can I overcome the urge to buy more guitars? Debbie's saying, I don't know. I haven't figured that one out yet. I, you know what I do, I try to do though, honestly, Debbie, is I try to earn that guitar. This guitar, this Gretsch, has not been earned. No, I'm not giving it away because of that, but it's not been earned. And what I mean by that is it's a rockabilly guitar, and I really need to give it some rockabilly licks and do more with it. This guitar has been earned. I've, I've played lots of blues. I have other guitars and other equipment that I feel like I haven't earned, and the way I look at it is sometimes, unless it's a business write-off or something like that, I say... Yeah, don't get it. Play, you know, give concentration to that guitar. It's like having kids. Like, if you're not paying attention to your kids, you shouldn't have more kids. You know, that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Um, okay, great, great. All right, a couple more questions. Uh, do, you, do you think a child 11 years old and parent can take lessons together. Yeah, I used to teach one-on-one -on -one lessons or one-on-two -on -two lessons all the time with father and son or father and uh, daughter, mother and daughter, mother and son, did that all the time. And it was very helpful to both of them because they could kind of play off of each other. There was always one that was better than another, obviously. So the one has to kind of hold back a little bit, but that's okay. And it's very rewarding and it's very, it's a great, it's great time together, you know? <coughs> Mark is saying, Eric, what do you think of Gretsch guitars? I, lo I love them. <coughs> that's a 1959 Gretsch 6120, and it's one of my favorite guitars. I just think it has just so much, uh, so much stink on it. I just love it. 
If I were to buy a new Fender Stratocaster, Evan's asking, what model would you buy? I'm buying my first American Fender Strat in a month or so, and I can't decide on a professional American Elite or AVRI. Thoughts? Evan, no, and to be quite honest with you, I wouldn't know the differences between those. I really wouldn't. Uh, I don't know enough specifically about models and that sort of thing on guitar. I, I do more teaching. Yes, I, I do teach about some of that stuff, like woods and um, styles, like the difference between, say, like a Fender and a Les Paul, but that's kind of getting down to a macro level or micro level maybe, and um, and I wouldn't know the difference between those. So I would, I'd check out some forums, call them up, um, but better yet, watch video one and video two of the free course of the unstoppable guitar system, of the complete guitar system that we have 75% off today. Watch those first two videos where I teach you how to find out which of those guitars you should be buying without knowing all the specific differences. Because there's really three things that you gotta know. Can you afford it? Cool, you can afford it. If you can, how's it feel, how's it sound? All the other stuff are just labels. And if they weren't there, you, how would you know? You'd go on what sounded right and what played the best. So. That's all that really matters anyhow. No one cares whether you're playing an American Strat, a Mexican Strat, or a Korean Strat. They just don't care. How does it sound? They care about that, and you care how it feels, right? What should I do to practice systematically? I am also weak in my rhythm. How can I overcome it, and how do I find a key to a particular song? All this is answered inside, my, inside the course that we're offering for 75% off today. Practice systematically by taking lessons systematically and then doing the homework according to that. Have you ever jammed with Glenn Hoffman, the Hoff? I do not. I have not. Mark is asking, do I do Skype lessons? I do them on rare occasions. I charge $100 an hour because for me, I mean, here we are, uh, in this time, I will have reached one and a half people for the amount of time that I've reached, I don't know, Hundred, at least hundreds of people. Usually when we get done watching these broadcasts, we've, we've reached thousands of people. So you can see why it really behooves me to be in front of the camera and teaching because I can reach so many more people. Am I making money on this? Well, no. I'm doing a live lesson. Obviously, if you buy a course, then yeah, sure, I'll make something. Um, but that's how I prefer to teach because here we're still interactive and I can reach so many more people, right? Um, so, love your philosophy. I got a Telecaster. I haven't earned it yet either, but I practice uh, as my mentor. I'm on the way. Nice. Nice. All right, my friends. Man, great questions today. Great questions from Facebook. Great questions from YouTube. I might sh pop over to YouTube really quickly here just to see if, um, if Verdi put her question on here again, and she did not. So, I don't have it, so I can't do it. Um, okay, so, you know, I'm gonna answer the last few here on, on YouTube. I'm just gonna do it, and then we're gonna get out, okay? Um, what guitar do you like to use for swing or jazz? I love the Gretsch, but uh, it just depends. I've used the Tele, I've used the Strat, but I love that, I love that Gretsch. It's awesome. I know you're the year guitar stage, but what would you have any tips for a friend uh, trying to learn drums? There's a guy out there, Mike's Drums. I don't know anything more about it other than that, and he's got a really great live system and everything else. It's not cheap, but he's like really, really good. Um, hey Joe, I heard you shut your old lady down, indeed. Overall, what's your favorite guitar? It might be my Fender Strat, just because it's so easy to play, and I just really love the tone on it, you know? All right, my friends, uh, really quickly before we go, if you don't know this already, we're picking 15 winners after the broadcast. If you haven't shared this video yet, now's your opportunity to win. Uh, we're giving away like literally over $300 worth of stuff in this one broadcast right now. Giving away 10, um, 10 ebook bundles. Okay, you can find more about that on my website, yourguitarsage.com, and there's an ebook. Uh, button that you can hit and you can find out more about that. We're giving 10 bundles away at valued at $27 a piece. I'm also giving away five CDs and one of those lucky winners is also going to win um, a DVD of my Nashville number system. So over 300 bucks today, you can win that stuff very easily by just sharing this video on Twitter or Facebook 
and after the broadcast, we pick winners, okay? So 15 winners will be chosen. Other stuff that I have for you today, I have 75% off of the complete guitar system. I know there's so many folks out there who have been through my free course, the yourguitarsage.com slash 30, and they're looking to get to the next level. A ton of folks that are in this broadcast right now. Because I keep, I know this because I'm seeing the questions come across. How do I, how do I, how do I? And I can keep telling you, you can search on YouTube and look for this one video or these two videos, and those are helpful, and they're out there to help you, okay? There's a reason I give lots of stuff away for free. But if you're looking, I'm telling you, that if you're looking to really learn step-by-step -step methods, you gotta have a course. You gotta work step-by-step -step and do these lessons. And I'm giving you 75% off right now. That course is normally like 140 something, 147, something like that, in that ballpark. And right now it's under 40 bucks with a 75% off, okay? Complete Guitar System has hundreds of videos in it. Step-by-step, -step, I answer mail in there every day. Uh, it's chock full of what you need. If you can't afford the Unstoppable Guitar System, which is $400, you can get into this for less than one-tenth of the cost, okay? And it has a lot of what's going on in the Unstoppable Guitar System. It doesn't have everything. That's why it's less than one-tenth of the cost, okay? So that's the difference between the two. I don't do live there. I do live in the Unstoppable Guitar System. But I'm doing live with you here right now, so you could, you could do that instead. If you're on a budget, Check that out right now. It's going to be limited the first 100 people, as you've seen here today. We've had, uh, at least concurrently, we've had well over 200 people. So if only half the people that are currently watching got that, then we're going to run out of those coupons really, really quickly. But we've literally had thousands of people. When we get done watching these videos, we've had thousands of folks walk watching. So if you want to get in, now's the time to do it. It's 75% off. Um, check that out. All that description. All those links and all, everything is in the description of this video. Or you can go to yourguitarsage.com slash play by ear. And there's a coupon code. If you enter that coupon code, you will get 75% off of the course today. Or until we run out of coupons. We might be out already. I don't know. My friends, great questions today. I'm trying to think if there's anything else for you. Oh, uh, yourguitarsage.com slash live. Go there, open up another tab right now. Go there and check that out. Oh, I do have other stuff for you. Yourguitarstage.com slash live. Why do you want to go there? Because if you want to, if you love winning free stuff and you want these free live broadcasts where we're answering questions and you're getting just maximum uh, maximum guitarage and learning great stuff, then check that out. Join there. We'll let you know when we're going live, at least our bigger broadcasts. On these, we just Facebook. YouTube and we just go. Uh, but the big ones where we give away thousands of dollars worth of stuff, you'll be privy to that. Uh, also, kit.com slash your guitar sage or your guitar sage.com slash gear. We'll post that link. If it's not, it's probably in the description of this video already. But if you have any questions about gear, which we've seen tons of questions about gear already, so I know you got questions. Everything. I'd say 99% of everything that I play, that I use, I have available in my kit store. Uh, pedals, picks, capos, guitars, amps, cables, the whole nine yards are there. So if you have any questions on expensive stuff that I have, affordable stuff that I have, um, and you're looking to get into all these different bits and pieces, go there. Uh, I, have, I typically have a blurb about everything that's in there so that you understand what it is that I'm that I'm teaching on. And so many of these things have reviews as well that I have done reviews on on YouTube. So make sure you check that out because we've got tons of great stuff in that store. It's constantly growing. Uh, what else? If you never want to buy anything and you're just like, only thing I want to do is play a little bit of guitar and that's all I want to do. Shut up, Eric. Um, we just want your live broadcast. Then come to our live broadcast. And then the other thing is take advantage of the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, okay? It's the top 30 lessons I teach all my students here in Nashville, and that knowledge is going to help you immensely. I promise you it will. And if not, I'll give you 100% of your money back. I'll give you 1,000% of your money back on that free course, okay? I promise you I will.
<laughs> all right? All right, friends. Uh, look, Mark just said, honestly, the best $400 he ever spent. And uh, so Mark's in the Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, and that's the big course. Uh, the UGA, the, the Complete Guitar System, a tenth of that cost. Uh, has tons of stuff in it, but there you go. Um, Mark, thank you so much for letting me know that. Friends, I'm out of here. Great question today. I love when you guys join me. This is so much fun. I love doing these live broadcasts. I haven't eaten today because I have so much fun doing these. It's just, I don't know. I feed off of that live interaction, I guess, like somebody on stage, right? It's just, it, it's so much fun. I love to help you guys out. Please let me know how I can help you on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. It's like, I'm pouring myself out to you here. I'm trying to give you as much free stuff as possible while still keeping the lights on and buying new 4K cameras for pedal cams, which by the way, we're doing that. We're totally revamping the studio uh, to make your experience in these live broadcasts amazing. Okay, that's what I'm working on right now. Okay, so I love you guys. Thank you so much. Great questions. Uh, let me know how I can help in all those areas. Okay, I'm out of here. Love you. Uh, descriptions on everything is in uh, the, the links and everything in the description of these videos. Okay? See ya.